Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to do another transition inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. You guys seem to really like the transition videos, so this one's actually gonna be a really, really easy one. We're gonna be creating a whip pan transition, kind of like this one here. Now, these kinds of transitions are really quite popular in vlogging and sort of, you know, documentary style filmmaking because it's really easy to sort of add that with camera motion to transition between two different scenes. A little bit of a whoosh sound effect in there really helps sells the effect. And the best part is it's really easy to do in DaVinci Resolve 16. And I really like these tutorials that are really easy to accomplish because I think it really helps you guys learn the skills when the tutorial is a bit complicated. It can take, you know, a little bit of time for you guys to sort of get on board with it. So the easy tutorial is better for you guys to learn from. That being said, if you guys do want to learn a little bit more about Fusion, I do have a course for $12.99. You can check the link out in the description if you want to sort of delve deep inside of Fusion and visual effects. But otherwise, let's jump into this tutorial and create our own whip pan transition. All right, so let's get started. This is the effect we're going to create. A little bit of a whip pan transition, really, really easy to do. So what we're going to do is grab our footage. So I've got two clips here that I got up of pexels.com for free. Great resource if you want some free stock footage. So just this little bit of a clip here and I'll drag that down and clip here. But obviously you can use whatever clip you want. Now, when creating the transition, what you want to do is you want to only select the bit of the footage that you need to use the effect on. That way Fusion isn't dealing with, you know, 30 seconds worth of footage when really you're only affecting five seconds worth. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back 10 frames one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just using the arrow keys there. So now we have a 10 frame portion of that video. And now I'm just gonna drag the second clip up, drag it over the top and cut there. So now we have 10 frames of both bits of footage and this is gonna be the transition. Now by default, because the second clip is now on top, I'm just gonna quickly reverse that by just quickly dragging those down like so, so that the clip that clip runs into that one and then transitions. All right, next you wanna select both clips, right click, go new fusion clip. Now with the playhead over the top, we're gonna to jump into fusion. And what we're gonna do is just make sure the node editor is open, double viewer, all right. So first things first is let's figure out which media is what. So I'm gonna put media one into viewer one, media two into viewer two, and I'm gonna quickly rename them so that we can stay organized. So I'm gonna name this concert, and rename this one Neon because of the neon lights. And I'm just going to drag them over and above like that just so I know which one's actually on top just to keep myself in the game. Next, we're gonna add a transform node to both bits of footage. So shift space, type transform, and then select the concert one, shift space, type transform. Super, super simple. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the merge to, sorry, the merge node into viewer two and just show viewer two. So at frame one, we want the neon to be here. So we're gonna set a keyframe. And then at frame at the end, so frame nine, we want it to just be just be out of frame. So we're going to move it right over there, which will be 1.5. So we're gonna type 1.5, keep it nice and neat. Now, if we go through, we have our footage just moving out of the way. Now we're gonna do the opposite for the concert. So the concert, we're going to go back and at frame nine, we're gonna set a keyframe. And we're gonna go back and at frame zero, we're gonna set a keyframe in the opposite direction. So we're gonna drag the footage over there. So it's gonna be negative 0.5, hit enter. And so far that's, you know, if we go through the footage, now we have a little bit of a transition. If we play that through, well, it does what you know what we said, but let's add a little bit of a blur. Now, there are a few different ways to do it. You could add a blur on the transform node by going to the settings up here and going motion blur, but you'll notice that what that does is unfortunately creates this weird line in the center, a transparent line, because it's blurring the edges. There's nothing there on the edges. Therefore, we get this transparency, which looks kind of ugly. So we're actually gonna do it a different way. So we're gonna disable that. And we're going to just quickly add media out to the second viewer. With the merge one node selected, we're gonna hit shift space, add a directional blur. And we're gonna hit enter. And then what we're gonna do is at frame five or four, so roughly in the center, we're just going to control the 
angle of the blur. So with the directional blur selected, I'm gonna go 180 degrees on the blur angle so that it's going directly across like so. We can also change the border type to reflect. So that'll just give us, or actually let's go to replicate. That's gonna give us some nice borders around the edge. And now we're just going to turn the strength up to one. All right, so now we get this really strong blur effect and that's just gonna be a permanent apply. What we could actually do is maybe lower a bit because that's quite, quite intense. Let's go down to 0.8. I think that should be fine. And with that, we have our whip pan transition. Little glitchy, let's have a look in the editor. All right, so now we have our transition. Whoop, goes through. Now let's just quickly tidy it up a bit and make the curves a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer. All right, now what we're gonna do is going to open up our spline editor. So hit splines, we're gonna close the nodes down, we don't need to see that. And we're gonna click on transform one and transform two and zoom to fit. Now you should just have this single line because both the transforms perform the exact same motion just in reverse. So we should have a perfect linear line like that. So we're gonna drag select and gonna hit shift S to smooth out the points and we're going to leave it like that so it's nice and smoothed out. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to drag select and select everything from the directional blur to the transform node. We're gonna right click on a node somewhere, we're gonna go settings and we're gonna save all as. All right, and just for now, we're gonna save it to the desktop and we're gonna call this 10 frame whip pan. All right, so that's gonna be our 10 frame whip pan transition and we're gonna save that settings file there. Next, what I want you to do, all right, is because we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just replicate this with the drag and drop. So we're gonna actually get out of DaVinci Resolve, so we're gonna get you to quit. And now we have our settings file, we need to put that in the right location. So on a PC, that's gonna be local disk, program files, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, and then you can follow the rest of the steps. But on a Mac, we need to go to Finder, we need to go to Applications, DaVinci Resolve, then we got to show package contents. It's a bit, it's a long path. Contents, then we're gonna go to resources. We're gonna go to fusion. We wanna go to templates folder and here you go to fusion and this is where all the effects and all the things that we use in fusion are located. So what we're gonna do is create a new file and we're gonna call this transitions. Oop. And we're gonna drag the 10 frame whip pan setting file into that folder there and Exit out of that, now we can reopen DaVinci Resolve. All right, so with DaVinci Resolve reopen, what we're gonna do is just drag the exact same footage back down onto our timeline so that we can um, replicate that effect that we just created. So what we're gonna wanna do, cause we just created a 10 frame transition, so we're gonna do the back, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then drag over the top, and we're gonna create a new fusion composition and jump across to fusion. So now that we have this here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the merge node and that one there, and we're gonna rename our media. So we're just gonna quickly, we'll always, always rename the media. So we're gonna go neon and this one will be the concert. And we know that the neon needs to be on top. All right, so now what we're gonna do, if we go to our effects library and we go to templates and we use the drop down box, you can see we have a transitions folder, which is what we just created. And in here we have our 10 frame whip pan transition. So we drag that down onto here and we have everything that we need where we need it. So all we really need to do is plug and play. So we drag these down, directional blur to media out, neon into transform one, concert into transform two. And then if we go back to the editor, now we have our whip pan transition and it's pretty close to just drag and drop. And obviously, if you want to make one that's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, create different settings folders for that. And I do recommend renaming it the way I did there with like the 10 frame before it. That way you know, all right, I need 10 frames for this to work because if you have a 20 frame composition, it's gonna only animate in 10 frames and it can get, yeah, just use the 10 frame at the start there. But that's it guys, whip pan transition done and dusted. So there you have it guys, whip pan transition, told you it wouldn't be too hard. Really easy effect to create inside of Fusion and as well save it out so you can use it at a later date, which is really awesome and helpful so you can slowly build out your own library of transitions. Hopefully this tutorial has helped solidify some of the knowledge that I've been 
giving you guys with these tutorials and maybe give you a little bit of extra confidence to go out and create your own transitions without me, you know, going in a step-by-step -step tutorial fashion. But if you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit those thumbs up buttons. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, leave a comment below. I always love taking recommendations on what you guys want to learn and I do try my best to bring those videos to you as soon as possible. I do have one in the works this week. It's gonna be about sort of organizing your folders in DaVinci Resolve, or at least on the like the file end of your computer, so that you can have your templates, titles, and transitions all neatly organized, so you can start going out and creating your own effects and have them in your own library. So make sure you subscribe to that video. That will drop at some point this week. But until then, see ya.